Thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with us today. I, I really appreciate it and it's a great privilege for me to be here. Well, see, I, I was watching that moment when, when you were named party leader and I think a lot of people were expecting it, including you, but you seemed so overwhelmed at the moment at which it happened. Yeah, you know, uh, it's just like one of those things. You can expect them, you can think about them. Uh, you never quite know how it's all going to pan out until it suddenly is upon you. And I, yeah, I think if I can think back that moment, it was kind of like, it was quite surreal in some ways. Very, very point and very significant. And I think the implications thereof will be something I'll think about in the next couple of days. I mean, I think you, you made a very powerful first speech in, in your new position, but you also made it a point of strategically mentioning Hendrik Vervoort uh, on the back of, of Alistair Sparks's uh, comments the other day. Clearly that comment left unaddressed may have uh, caused a bit of damage to the brand, do you think? Yeah, and I think sometimes, you know, as I said, I respect Alistair Sparks uh, as a journalist, and I know he's played a lot of, uh, spent a lot of his life opposing apartheid. But it was also important for us, for to to be crystal clear that I think, as a party, we find the work of Hendrik Verwoerd something that's de deplorable and evil. And I think even Robin Carlyle, who came in today in his Lifetime Achiever Award, came and and put out our message quite strongly. Musi, you've had a very meteoric rise in the DA. You've held a number of positions within a very short space of time. It has given the impression that you haven't had a lot of time to really bed yourself down, to really get to grips with the various positions that you've held and, 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 and perhaps uh, not, not really got a chance to, to shine in any of those positions because you moved so fast. How do you think you managed to persuade uh, such a huge number of delegates to vote for you? Look, let me first of all say in the, in the first instance, we must always understand the nature of where South Africa is at. I, I'm not an alarmist, but I certainly believe that South Africa needs to experience change electorally sooner. None of us can afford to see South Africa go to levels where unemployment is on the rise, we face an economy that is not growing, that, is, that suffers from being energy insecure and many other things. So in some ways, I haven't gone out to manage a career. I've gone out to manage a cause. And it's the cause that we must keep advancing. On the second issue about uh, having gone through multiple roles, it's also because I, I, as I've come from Congress, have now served in my role as Parliament, this gives us an opportunity to merge both roles, to allow the role of leadership in the party and the role of be leading in Parliament one that will remain the same. So I'll continue in this role for hopefully a number of uh, years to come. Uh, Musi, something that Wilmot James accused you of was offering another version of the ANC, not, not offering an alternative to, to the ruling party. Now, w when we look at the kind of policies that, that you're putting forward, are we seeing anything that is a radical departure from ANC policy or are we seeing a reversioning of ANC policy, uh, new permutations of exactly the same ideas? Not at all. I think there's clear blue water between us and the ANC. I think when President Zuma announced at um, the ANC's uh, centenary birthday in Cape Town, he called the ANC a socialist movement. And I think it's right to say that. Because the ANC believes fundamentally that the state must be at the center of development. The ANC may want to argue non-racialism, but quite frankly, about policy that, that still rings of a very racial society. The NC uh, has a practice of cater deployment that makes that the state is just an engine to employ comrades. Our policy suite is different. It argues for the rights of individuals. It upholds a sense of non-racialism. When we look at the economy, we don't believe the state must be at the center of it, but all the state can do is create a climate that allows for private enterprise to thrive. So I think on the economy, on issues of land reform, we've looked at it, at those issues uniquely different. And I think even in this values charter, it advances a totally different set from where the ANC is at. And I think soon, many people, the political contestation in South Africa often is about a better yesterday. And I accept that our past is a difficult and a painful one, but we must all contest for a better tomorrow. And that's the focus. In, in terms of the way the DA has, has developed its policies up to now, and you've said this yourself, it's, it, it's polarized itself very much against ANC policy, using ANC policy in practice as a sort of yardstick for what it will oppose. When is the DA going to start developing its own ideas, its own identity and its own trajectory apart from what the ruling party does? I think that process started yesterday. 
uh, it started at our Congress, the adoption of values. What will happen in the next couple of weeks is that we'll, we'll flesh out those values, we'll add policies that go with it. In the next few weeks, I'll then be able to share a vision for South Africa and a vision that, is, that, that comes out of these values and says, this is South Africa we like. I spent even a significant amount of time, even in my, to my speech today, by not mentioning the ANC at all. I think I, I maybe made a reference to the president, but mainly as a function of constitutionalism and where he sits on that issue. So I think the new DA that you'll see is a DA that will talk a lot more about where we stand, where we go from. We could never get away from our role as holding the government accountable. And unfortunately, the current government is the ANC. So you're not going to get away from not being able to, to speak about where the ANC goes wrong. But I think we're going to invest a lot more time speaking about who we are, where we're going. And you'll be able to see that coming out of this Congress, that's what this Congress was in the manner that it was, an adoption of a very significant transition in the constitution of the Republic and now puts us in a different space. I, I think. Uh, part of the the issue that analysts had with some of the the policies and the fleshing out of of those initial ideas of the DA is that is that they were quite vague overall that the, that the use of language was not incisive that your intention in many of the policies was not clear I mean, how, how long is it going to take for the DA to get to the point where it actually says what it means look the adoption yesterday was a values charter the definition of a value by its very essence you know, if I talk about a fair society, there are many dynamics that emerge from that. We talk about corruption, talk about all of, all of the constitutional provisions that make sure that the rights of individuals are protected so that fairness is always maintained. So I think what we mustn't do is take the values charter and tend to assume that's the specifics around what policies look like. The policy suite will emerge as a subset for that. In fact, there's a process even under, under, uh, on the go at the moment where even members of parliament and different players are spending time reviewing our policy space so that when we say we talk about the economy of Port Elizabeth, why do we talk about a port uh, and what that economy must look like? How do we talk about small businesses? What is a small business package that comes into it? What is, what is uh, venture capital going to look like in South Africa? And we've been quite good in, uh, even when we talk about finance and the macroeconomic policy, we've been very good about being able to give alternatives and being able to say, here's what the DS budget would look like. So I think at, uh, I'm quite comfortable that we are on our way to be able to launch a number of policies that will underpin our values charter. Let's leave it for, there for the moment. We'll be back in a moment with Musi Maimane, new DA leader.